PhD is English for uh, um, university degree, okay? Uh, and I am like in English, the name is Mayor's Proxy for Equal Treatment, although in Polish, as you uh, may have heard, it's Przeciwdziałanie uh, Wykluczenia, okay? It's a, you know, it's a name that nobody remembers and hardly anybody can pronounce. Okay, so that's me. By way of introduction, you can uh, write to me. Here is my email address, okay? Uh, no problem if you have any questions or you need any materials. Uh, I'm going to introduce a little bit uh, myself because that's uh, quite important and it is connected with what I do in the city hall. Um, I've been a university teacher for like 20 years now uh, and I've also been an activist. Uh, activist, do you know who an activist is? Mm -hmm. So who is an activist? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a person mm -hmm. that uh, <coughs> is going uh, uh, of some demonstrations or part, you know, something like this. Okay. And what do they do? Why do they go to demonstrations? Why, why do they participate in different actions, in different in initiatives? Because to change something. Hmm? To, change something. to change something. Yes, we call it social change. And as you may uh, see, I uh, am here also, as you know, from the city hall. But that's actually consistent with what I've been doing for right? for years. Uh, do you know what occasions, what demonstrations these are? Yes, that's uh, the Freedom Square, we can say, yes, the Freedom Square, okay, and me talking at uh, uh, those were demonstrations, the so-called uh, black protests, okay, uh, defending or fighting for uh, uh, the rights of women, because I am also an activist, um, um, and I always, uh, and I'm a proponent uh, of those rights, um, for women and for women. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you about what it is uh, to introduce a policy uh, which um, is a policy against discrimination. So first of all, two years ago when I started, because I started working in the city hall two years ago, uh, and um, I know that when you want to introduce certain policy, which is like equality against discrimination, you need to adopt certain documents, okay? When you adopt certain documents, they sort of show you what to do, okay? Then you uh, plan a policy and then you monitor, you check whether what you introduce is working, okay? And then you report. So one of those documents that was very, very important for the city hall, signed by uh, the mayor, was diversity charter. And um, Bosnia prides itself on being a signatory of this diversity charter, which is like a, uh, like a commitment that in the city hall, in this, uh, you know, in, 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 in this institution, where, do you know how many people work in the city hall? Mm -hmm. For us? Mm -hmm. 500? Cool, 1,500, over 1,500, okay? Just in the city hall, when you think about other institutions which are connected with the city hall, like schools, for example, okay? Uh, or any other institutions belonging to the city, municipal, we call them, you will have uh, 15,000 uh, people, okay? So, the mayor, as an employer, signed diversity charter for the city hall, okay? Um, commit, sort of committing himself and the whole institution to the issue of uh, fighting against discrimination in the workplace, so in the institution, uh, raising awareness, sharing knowledge, training people, okay, educating people, workers, on what is discrimination, what is mobbing. Have you heard about mobbing? So what is mobbing? 
disrespecting someone in work? At work, exactly. So when you are at work, okay, it's like probably school, you spend a lot of time at work, okay? Very important uh, are relations between people, okay? And uh, it uh, happens in different institutions that some people are sort of, you know, not listen, probably also discriminated against, but mobbing is more like mistreatment, like treating somebody uh, uh, worse than others, okay, for some reasons, also for reasons of control, also because you are a manager and you have power and you can do it, okay? So we train also uh, 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 people at work, uh, employers, uh, how not to, what is mobbing, when is mobbing. People sometimes don't know it, okay, don't realize. So this is diversity charter, but we are also an example for other institutions and for businesses in the city uh, to adopt similar policies, okay? So the mayor also um, signed a document which was a creation, we would say, of appointing certain people from the city hall uh, uh, who constitute, um, um, uh, let's say, a body, a committee responsible for uh, uh, implementing uh, this statement in diversity charter, okay? So we are going to introduce trainings, we are going to introduce, uh, we have uh, such policies like, maybe I, I can see it here, uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, Yes, so what happens in the city hall, you can see, we um, ask people whether they know what diversity is. Diversity, do you know what diversity is? Diversity of people. Like this, what's diversity? We are all, all people, yes? yes, but we are different, okay? Different. How can we do that? Different? Maybe hair, eyes. Excellent. Hair, the color, yes. Eyes. Okay, what else? Uh, character. Character. Okay, what else? Skin color. Skin color, excellent. Height, you could say, yes? Yes. Okay, uh, probably. Uh, the way you build, okay? Some people are a little bit bigger, some, some people are a little, little bit smaller, okay? Anything else? Clothes. Clothes, of course, okay? What else? There are certain features which very much determine how we function in society, how people perceive us, how uh, people treat us, and how we see ourselves. Okay, and one, like basic, basic features, one of them was mentioned, okay, which is skin color, okay. Another one is gender, whether you're a man or you're a woman, a boy or a girl, you may have noticed some differences, okay, in the way you're treated, okay, and if you did, it's actually not good, okay, we should be treated equally, okay. Uh, the next one uh, will be what? Hmm? Age. Oh. Yes, age is something that I cannot change, but it determines okay, my position in society, how people treat me. Okay? Uh, for example, you might be uh, discriminated against because you are young. Do you? Uh, have you noticed such behaviors that people treat you, you know, with disrespect or something because you're young? Yeah. Hmm? Sometimes. When? Uh, so, um, hmm, I don't know, maybe, um, uh, I think I didn't, oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> But maybe, like everybody, uh, like everybody expect walking um, down the street, okay, on the pavement, right? Don't you notice that everybody expects you to sort of feel the way? Hmm? You never noticed that. I thought that when I was 
younger people in the street expected me to, uh, you know, to yield way, to sort of move because they were walking, okay, because I'm younger, all right, which of course I'm also nice, okay, I'm very well behaved, you could say, so uh, I uh, do such things, okay, uh, but uh, it's not that people expect or people do not take your uh, for example, adults may not take your opinion into consideration, yes? Like you say, I don't want, and it's out of law, okay? Uh, well, of course, parents can do it because parents decide, okay? But sometimes you may notice that people sort of, the older you get, the more changes you will see, okay? And sometimes with age, okay, you will notice like, oh, I am being treated with disrespect because I'm older. What is this discrimination called? Do you know? It's ageism. Ageism, okay? Like for example, I cannot get a job because they expect only 20 something, okay? People of, uh, in, in their 20s or 30s, and I'm for example over 40, okay? And I don't get a job, which of course is illegal, okay? We cannot do it. We cannot discriminate against anybody uh, because of their skin color, because of their gender, uh, because of their or sex, if you want, okay, male, woman, male, female, uh, because of their age. Can you think of any other? Uh, name and surname, maybe. Well, name and surname, uh, meaning, <coughs> meaning, um, like I don't uh, the name Yannick. Him, okay, yes, but of course, but when you think about like legal consequences, it will be also um, ability or disability, okay? So when you are a person with disability uh, or with disabilities, you should have equal, okay, opportunities uh, on the job market and so on and so forth. Anything else that you can think of? Sexual orientation, you should not be discriminated against on nationality. Hmm? Nationality. Nationality, excellent, okay, which is connected with ethnicity, you know, ethnicity, like you're of different ethnic origin and therefore you have different shades of, you know, skin color and so on. Uh, so that's what do we call uh, uh, such uh, discrimination because of somebody's ethnic origin. Racist, of course, that's illegal as well, okay? That's when you're a racist, uh, you uh, can be sued, okay? And not necessarily you don't have to be sued. I mean, this is uh, sort of by default, okay? Uh, you committed crime. But here we have uh, this diversity, okay? In the workplace, uh, we created a, a contest, okay? For uh, employers. Uh, to raise their awareness. How do they see diversity? What is it in the workplace? And you can see, for example, a group of people in the yard, okay, uh, holding uh, the, this sort of inscription, we are different, okay, lucky us, sort of, okay, which is great. We enjoy, we are happy that there are so diversified people among us. We have to learn how to speak to people, okay, who are different, who have different style of communication and so on and so forth. Um, we also hold conferences, we hold workshops for employers, okay, to train them, to teach them what is discrimination, to make them feel what is, you know, when they might be actually pushing the limits, okay. It's always, and also, uh, discrimination, okay, it's because discrimination is active, okay, now, where does it come from? Where does it come from, discrimination? What is the reason why we discriminate against uh, people on the basis of age, sex, the difference of uh, uh, skin color, ability, age, what do you think? Where does, where, where, where does it come from? We, we, know, we all know we shouldn't do it, okay? But why do we do it? So, Okay, we don't like difference because we don't know difference, okay? What do we know it's instead? Certain cliches, okay? 
certain uh, we have certain knowledge which somehow okay maybe we heard of okay we don't like difference or we are afraid of difference okay is a very good point here so we have heard some opinions we don't know uh, people who belong to different groups okay and we have certain opinions which are called stereotypes have you heard about stereotypes okay give me some examples Uh, that black people are uh, dirty in no. hmm? uh, Muslim people will uh, Okay, Sorry. excellent. That, uh, that's a stereotype, okay? Very dangerous one, okay? But like something, young drivers are crazy and reckless. Have you heard about it? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Nat Natalia's. Okay, you have light uh, color hair. Okay, so we are stupid. Exactly. That that's actually offensive. Okay, I mean you hear those jokes. Okay, oh, like you know, uh, uh, stupid uh, about stupid blogs. Okay, have you heard such jokes? Yeah. Yes. Okay, in your presence, you were present there, and you heard those jokes. What did you? How did you? I know that was a joke, but it's mm -hmm. not nice. It's not nice? Yes. Did you say anything? Hey, it's not nice. No. Why? I don't know. But... Because you thought it wouldn't be cool, right? Yeah, I'm right. Don't be afraid not to be cool, okay? When people offend you and tell you, oh, get some distance, okay? I even say hello, okay? Look at me, I have long hair, okay? And you always think, okay, so they give up, they say this job, they tell this job, and then what do you do? You think, how am I going to act, to disprove this job, okay? You put a lot of energy, okay? And I'm going to show them I'm not like that, okay? Instead of putting your energy in study, okay? And getting wiser and more intelligent and getting more knowledge and then going to different programs like Erasmus in Baguette. Um, so that's what we do in the city. Uh, of course, I want to tell you that I also work because since we uh, accepted this document, we introduced this policy of reflecting diversity in the city hall. We are sort of ambassadors, okay? So we are good examples to follow for other institutions in the city, but not only, okay? Here you can see that I go around Poland and I talk about it, okay? Usually I go to uh, congresses of women, okay? Because it happens that women who constitute like half of our society, okay, still feel and are discriminated against, okay, on systemic basis, okay, not that like that one person discriminates against me, okay, because I'm a woman, but it is systemic, sort of written in the, uh, in the policy of the country. Um, can you think of any examples of how women are uh, unequally treated in this country? And it's sort of, well, little. Hmm? What do we know about practices? Although we have the constitution. Have you heard about gender pay gap? Like women earn less than men. Oh, yes. Have you heard about it? Yes. Do you know how much less women earn than men? I'm talking about average. Now they say it's about 7 or 8%. But my question is, okay, how come if women only earn 7 or 8% less than men, how come that when they become pensioners, okay, when they retire, okay, their pension is at least 40% less than men's pension, okay? So, for a woman to be in this country, okay, when she grows old, she will become poor. Okay, that's the perspective, right? Which, again, we need to find it. This one shows you how I also work with um, similarly minded 
people in local governments, the city hall is local government, okay, around the country, okay, are uh, in the picture um, in, uh, uh, at the bottom. You can see people from Gans, from Tom, from Swoops, from Częstochowa, from Wadowice, from Lublin, uh, from Szczecin, uh, yeah, and from Poznań. Okay? They, they all came to a conference. We were thinking about how to introduce certain measures in our respective local governments. Okay? So we sort of help each other. Uh, that's another thing. Education. Education is the thing that I uh, especially care about. That is my priority. Okay? Here you can see I invite, me, I invite teachers and uh, uh, directors okay, of uh, schools in Poznan uh, for conferences to make them aware about the need for education against discrimination, uh, to provide them with trainings if they want, how to carry out workshops and so on and so forth. Okay? Here is one of the conferences. What I learned from those teachers and directors who came to my meeting is that they need support and signal from the city hall because they want to teach uh, uh, in their schools, uh, they want to teach uh, respect for diversity, uh, how to avoid discrimination, yes, how to, uh, for people, to, for students to understand what stereotypes are, uh, stereotypes are, how they work, okay, and how to sort of control, right, how to learn, how to tolerate others, how to be open. Um, so, my, uh, let's say, um, recent uh, success, I would say, success, uh, was to convince, because you know, the city hall, like the mayor, is the executive power. You know executive power? Somebody who governs, who manages, okay? But there is also power which has, um, uh, or there is also a body which has the right to decide, to sign bills, local bills, local leg re legislation. And this body of people, it is called the city council, Rada Miasta. Have you heard about it? Okay. So they are people who actually make decisions, who decide about the budget. So how much money will be spent on what thing. So I managed to finally persuade the city council that education like this, uh, anti-discrimination, I call it, or education for peace, if you want, okay, is very, very important, okay. I got signals from teachers and students and parents, okay, and directors. We need it. So what happened uh, in Poznan, the first city in Poland, uh, we had certain budget allocated, some money allocated for anti-discrimination education. So. For example, if you, like next year, because I know this, uh, this course is not uh, carried out in, this, in, in your school, but next year, maybe, you can talk to your teacher and say, we would like to have a course in this, you could, because you can get some money, you have additional classes, you can create, uh, uh, you can create an event about toleration, about human rights, okay, about, uh, you can create a, I don't know, a drama performance in this school, uh, and you can get, uh, and the teacher will get money, okay, because you need to, pre to prepare, okay? So that's uh, an idea for you. I'm also going to show you, and lead with your teachers, okay? It's, um, Anti-discrimination education in school, okay, it's a sort of uh, manual for teachers what to, how to plan the class because they need to apply for the money to the city council, okay, to the so-called <coughs> which is education department, for those classes, okay, and I'm going to leave it with the old teacher, okay, and I'm also going to leave uh, 
uh, sort of booklet, if you want, how we in the city council, in the city, uh, how we uh, take care about this diversity policy. The actions here, they are connected mainly with my activity, okay? Because this is So I'm going to comment. This year, I'm going to tell you, this year, I'm going to leave it with you so you can have a look at it later, okay? This year is very important, you know why? Because it's uh, an anniversary city for anniversary. anniversary. Excellent. Uh, for uh, 100 years of uh, laws of the movements. Okay, oh, thank you. It's also independence, right? Uh, uh, 100, uh, uh, the 100th anniversary of Polish independence. But I actually wanted to hit this because it also means that 100 years ago, on the 28th of November, Okay, the then Marshal in Pilsudski signed a very important document. Okay, this document was uh, the right to vote, which is political right, okay, of citizens, uh, is going to be granted to everybody, irrespective of irrespective of their gender. Okay, to the best blend in that way for men and for women. And Poland was one of the first countries to go that adopted this law, so gave political rights to women. Of course, it's not that it gave. There was a long-lasting fight, okay? Struggle, uh, women suffered. We have a um, web page which is devoted particularly to this 100 year anniversary uh, of uh, women's rights. Uh, Polish parliament, decided that 218 is the year of uh, women's rights, okay? And we use this opportunity. We also assign some budget. It's a web page, you can have a look at it. Uh, we not only tell the story of how women got rights, what happened in Wielko Polska and Polska then, we call it her story, okay? History, you know, history, history like history telling the, about the past. But in English, it has a very funny his story. Okay, so there occurred an alternative, her story, okay? Why? Because very often women were omitted in history books. Why? Because their contribution was not considered to be as important as men's. Why? Because people view history as, I don't know, wars, fights, okay? Uh, let's say also very important political events. Women in the past were included, excluded, okay? Women in the past uh, dealt with something else. They dealt with social change, okay? So when we think about history, it's not only political events and battles, but it's also how society developed, okay? What um, let's say new policies for uh, for uh, the whole society were introduced in the past, and women, of course, had a great <laughs> contribution to that. that. But that's one thing. The second uh, aim of this web page <clears throat> is also to let you know about women in Poznan, contemporary women. Okay, they might be doing very different jobs. They might be activists. Okay, they might be teachers or school directors, and if they want to write like an opinion essay, okay, or um, they want to comment on something, okay, in a longer form, they can write there. It's not often the case that we would like to write to the newspaper because we have a very strong opinion, we know about something, and we don't do it. Ah, oh, they won't publish. Okay, we invite every woman and men, provided that the men talks about women's issue in a, this, you know, emancipatory way, uh, to write about, to give us that, to, to let us publish their voice, their opinion. So I strongly recommend that you have a look at this web page. And by the way, this web page is also translated into English, not the whole of it, but to a large extent it is. 
Uh, of course, you can find also on this web page very different initiatives, things that are happening in the city which are connected with women's uh, rights with this 100th uh, anniversary and feel invited okay, to go to those events. Uh, so why don't you have a look? It's our unique project. It is, you know, to, um, to make us realize how many uh, good things women did in the past and how many good things women are doing today, okay? Because um, very often what they do is somehow forgotten. Um, okay, here is my initiative. Oh, another success. Um, last year in Poznan we had a huge, huge, huge event for women, for the rights of women, which was called uh, the Congress of Women. 4,000 people came to this event. It was open for everyone. And uh, I was responsible, of course, for the coordination from uh, uh, the city hall. Um, and you know what? I decided maybe we should decorate the, city, the streets in the city, which have uh, names to honor some women in history. So I asked to the streets to be counted. Okay, and I said, so how many streets do we have in Poznan which are named after a historical person? So it has to be a real historical person. Not Olenka Wilenczukna, not Olenka Śnieżka, okay? But a real historical figures. And it turned out that it was all, almost 500 streets, okay? Were named after famous people in history. Now, how many women do you think? 38 out of almost 500. So it was not even 10%. And I made a public outcry of that. And I also organized women in the city hall, okay, around an initiative. Why don't we, because we have this year, okay, why don't we introduce a solution that we will name new streets in 2018 after famous women only. Do you know what were the voices? People said, yeah, because we counted. We say, so few, why? But there were voices, well, but will we find such famous, important women in history? Believe it, believe me, men from the city hall, I heard this. And it turned out that yes, we did. We found a lot. And this year, until it was by uh, July, 25 new streets in Poznan gained new names after famous women. Okay? You can you can have a look, you can check, okay? So you know the proportion got wow, okay, bigger now. Uh, because the city, the city hall signed a sort of commitment, a will, that this year only new streets, if they are going to be named after a historical person, uh, this historical person will be of the female uh, gender, okay? And next year, so for the following years, they also pledged that they would make sure that there is a balance, okay, that they will look for both men and Women, okay, sort of equal. And again, we are uh, the we are uh, very unique, and we were the first in Poland who introduced this. It was the city council, and I'm very very happy about it. Now, <clears throat> yeah, that's the Congress of Women. You notice uh, the Congress of Women, which is uh, an annual event uh, uh, for women. Of, for the women of Poland, okay, anybody can come, then you have to register. And also, what we do there, we talk about women's rights, okay, what needs to be done. Uh, we talk, we present, I mean, we present, the Congress of Women presents uh, or creates an opportunity to meet very, very famous women, very famous stars, because everybody goes, yes, every woman, a very famous woman from TV comes to uh, the Congress of Women. It gives you power, okay? 
it gives you an occasion to meet other women, okay, to talk, to learn from them, but also there are workshops which sort of empowerment, you know, empowerment workshops that you feel, well, wow, I can do it, okay, and gives you energy for future action. So that's uh, the uh, Congress of Women, which by, before last year, took place only in Warsaw, okay? And last year, for the first time, this Congress of Women uh, traveled outside Warsaw, and guess which was the first city? Well, Poznan, of course, right? So we are also proud of it, but we, uh, um, well, of course, you know, it's all ideological, but I'm working, okay, I'm working on it. So it's not only talking, okay, it's also doing. It takes some time, believe me. We also, and I also, mm -hmm. uh, take care of foreigners in our city. Do you know how many foreign people uh, we have in the city? Quite a lot. It's difficult to count, okay? Because we don't ask people about nationality, okay, when we have the census. But what we know that Poznan is visited by uh, a million and a half, okay, one and a half million of uh, one and a half million of foreigners a year. We have 5,000 foreign students in this city who stay here for at least, you know, three or five or even more years. Uh, and I don't know whether you've heard, we had racist incidents in the city. Have you heard about it? Like somebody was beaten up on public transport or in the public, no, in the street. We had a, uh, a few cases like this. Two and a half years ago, um, a man of Syrian origin was beaten up in front of the old brewery, Stary Broga. He was lying on the street, uh, bleeding, okay, with his nose bleeding and asking for help. And you know what? Nobody helped him. People took pictures, okay? So how to prevent this? He told his story, it was, you know, very, uh, I would say, very famous story or infamous story. Uh, so what we decided, we decided to create a system that when something like this happens to you, you're a foreigner, you don't speak Polish, okay? You don't know how things work in this city because you come from a different country and you're attacked, okay? You look for a sign. This sign is this triangle. It's called Airbag Poznan. You know Airbag? Yes. Where is Airbag? Yes. Why? What, what is it for? Mm -hmm. To uh, because when we have a crash, yes, yes, uh, we will not uh, hit. Uh, we will, uh, not this will just make us more safe. Exactly safety. Okay, so you have a bang, and the airbag is there. Okay, to sort of alleviate the pain, the shock, uh, to take care of you, right? So you don't get sort of killed or crushed totally. And that's why we call it Airbag Poznan. Whenever, you, if you're a foreigner, okay, and something like this happens, you're attacked, you're robbed, you look for a sign like this, okay, and you enter. It's usually a bar, a restaurant, okay, a tourist place. We have now like 30 places in the city. Uh, they have to have access from the pavement, you know. Uh, and the people inside, first of all, will take care of you, will give you a safe space. Maybe they will give you a handkerchief, they give you some water. They will call the police or the ambulance, okay, knowing that you need help. Those people that are trained by the police, they know what to do, okay? And we now have about 30 places. Uh, there are a lot of places in Poznan who want to belong to this airbag Poznan. It is like foreigner friendly, okay? Uh, but we need to sort of be a little bit slow because we need to train them, okay, and to see if it works. And you know what? We go to universities, we talk about it. Uh, I go to 
orientation days. You know what orientation days are? At universities, when you're a foreign student, and we have foreign students from all the continents, okay? Uh, you have orientation days because you knew, uh, you learn about the city, where to go, they show you what a policeman looks like, okay, police officer, and they say, oh, this is a person, whenever you're in trouble, you can go to, and so on and so forth. And I go there, and I talk to those people, they are so diversified, like, you know, a plethora of colors, you can see, okay, hairstyles and everything. They are probably the most diverse group in the city. For them, if they come from a, uh, you would say, multicultural uh, country or city, coming to Poznań is a shock. Okay? They sometimes do not leave that dormitory, dormitory is uh, dormitory for a week. They are afraid to go into the street because they look so different. And they feel like, oh, everybody is looking at me, okay? Because it's so different. We are such a homogeneous, you know, Yenakovit. We are such a homogeneous society here. So I go to them, I talk about it, okay? And I tell them, we in Poznan, okay, like you, we want you to be here. And they feel so empowered, you know? So far, uh, this program has been running for uh, over, uh, uh, yeah, for like seven or eight months now, for almost a year now. And we haven't got, haven't had any problematic situations, okay? But it's not the fact that we need to actually react to crises, okay? It's good that there are no crises, okay? It's good that there is no, that there are no attacks and nobody needs help. But what they know is, okay, I feel safe in this city. So to give them this idea that, um, uh, because many people when they come to Poland, you know what they expect? To get beaten in the street. Because that's the, if you want, stereotype, okay? <laughs> that's the story that goes outside Poland, okay? But now we show that there are more people who will help you. So that's Erwe Poznan. Okay. Whenever you go somewhere and see this, you know it's Erwin Poznan, okay? We also have this Migrant Info Fund, which is an institution that helps foreigners in Poznan. It's totally paid by the city. And I believe uh, we're okay, okay. I don't know whether you heard about a social action, which we called Poznan without hate, Poznan bez nienawiści. This action was coordinated by me and it took place on the 26th of May this year, okay? So what we did was we painted walls which are inscribed, which were inscribed with like racist inscriptions or symbols, okay? I would like to show you the movie if it's possible because we have, I have a movie from this section and that would be Probably the ending. I'm just going to show you this. Uh, it's pictures from this section. This is PST Kurpinskiego. Okay? We painted the whole wall, but it's not only there. Uh, there were many places in Poznan uh, uh, where we painted over this hatred. And on the next day, uh, the uh, University, Poznan University of Arts, okay, um, uh, held a workshop. And what they wrote was this sort of, you know, uh, mural, okay, called uh, the, the inscription tolerance, okay? So that's a new, you could say, we changed the city to some extent, of course, in certain places. So if it's possible, uh, maybe at the end I'll show you the movie. Now I'm going to also show you how we care about different minorities, because so far I spoke as on women. I focus on um, foreigners, and now I'm also focusing on uh, LGBT community. Uh, because this community, uh, or people from this community are also discriminated against. What do we call this discrimination? What is it sort of powered by? Have you heard about it? Homophobia. Homophobia, okay. It's sort of fear of hatred or intolerance okay, towards people who are or who we think 
are, okay? That's very important because they don't have to be, okay? Of non-heterosexual orientation. And Poznan is known to be this open city, uh, thanks, of course, to a very active group uh, which organizes the freedom marches. Uh, this year, seven, almost 7,000 people took part in this um, freedom march. So it's probably the biggest, apart from Warsaw, because Warsaw is the capital, so uh, uh, But here, the biggest in Poland. And also, uh, the mayor of Poznań was the first in Poland to take part in this uh, march, uh, in this um, March of Equality or Equality March, and he can't sort of takes part in it every year and opens it. It's a signal that we as a city, we sort of, you know, the, 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 the mayor says so, uh, that the city welcomes everybody, okay, and we want everybody to be, to feel like home here, okay, it's very, very important. But it's not only symbolic, because uh, the first picture shows you a conference that I organized or co-organized in the city hall. Uh, it was about children and homophobia. How children at school, uh, uh, children from your age, children and young people, okay, how they are affected by homophobia, okay, by this discrimination, the fear that they might be discriminated against in school, in institutions. Um, 100 people, because it was the capacity of the room, 100 people enrolled for the conference uh, during three days, okay? And the next three days, the next 100 people created a list waiting, I want to go to this conference. This conference was meant for um, uh, people who work with young people, like you know, uh, uh, people from, you know, psychologists, okay, uh, like teachers as well, but people from uh, hospitals and also from the city council and the city institutions. Uh, so it was also the first and probably the only one in Poland so far, but it was very, very important that this event takes place in the city hall, not at university, because we need to speak to people who work, okay, with uh, uh, young people who need to recognize, okay, uh, what might be happening there, also their needs. Um, uh, the next one is, uh, I also invited city councillors, sort of, Radni, okay, to a meeting with the families, okay, uh, who are, we call the rainbow families, okay, but uh, there are families like the, like this, sort of um, uh, single sex parents, okay, uh, and they have children. And they are, by law, they are not recognized, okay, as sort of family family. So they do not get support like any other family. But there are children, there are young people brought up there, okay. And in the city we support, okay, our local policy is to include all the families into the support system of the uh, local government, okay. Uh, so that would be another one. Okay, so what is my, what is my, let's say, how I work. There are people who do not have equal opportunities, yes. What do we do? We create sort of measures here, like those two boards, okay, for people who are on wheels, or uh, people who are with friends, little children, okay, like to make it possible for them to go, to go up. Uh, here you can see a building with a lift, yes, and you see this lift was sort of added later. Uh, and, of course, if you're on a wheelchair or you're, you know, uh, very old and decrepit, you can use this uh, lift but is it good? That's what we're trying to do here. Yes, every action, every, is it good? Well, it's good, but you have to remember that those boards can be taken away easily, okay? And this lift there can break down, and it might take time, okay, to repair it. So what is the idea? The idea really is to create opportunity from the very start. This is the building Oslo National Opera House. If you ever go to Oslo, go there and see. 
If you are on a wheelchair, on a bike, on three legs, five legs, whatever, okay, you can enter this building. Uh, what is more, you can go on the roof and you can get some sunshine, okay? So the idea of, let's say, excess opportunity for everybody is somehow, you know, in the very idea, in the very plan of this building. And that's what basically my work uh, consists in, okay? To finally get to the point that everybody thinking about how the city works, okay, thinks about different groups of people and their needs. Because everybody may need uh, something different to sort of have equal opportunity. Because it's not about being equally treated, okay? Not being equally treated. Because some people need to be a little bit pushed up, okay? Uh, used to have this, I wonder if I have it. Wait a moment. Yes. Equality. The idea of equality here. You can see a people. There's a pitch. You can see a fence and you can see three people, okay? Uh, you can see that the ground is not even, okay? So they start from a very different position, right? And now, if we give them equal treatment, which is here, okay? Then only some of them will have this chance to see the map, right? Because equal does not mean sort of equity, which is justice. Some need more help. And it is shown in the other picture, okay? That those who start from the low, so the opportunities are the, let's say, slightest, okay? They need a bigger push up, okay? To be able to have this, to see this uh, uh, match. But I want, to sh I want you to, uh, yes? Uh, what's the Polish word for equality? It's uh, równość. Ah. Equity is also równość, but it also means sort of uh, justice, sprawiedliwość. Okay? Uh, now you see that why those people cannot see the, uh, this match, okay, is not because they are smaller or taller. It's because the ground is uneven or the fence is bigger, okay? So we talk about certain barriers outside of those people, okay? And some people need uh, to that. Well, my idea is, okay, I'm going to show you this. We need to destroy barriers, okay? Like this also opera house. Yes, to destroy in the very thinking of the policy where we put money budget, okay, um, how we distribute uh, access to different institutions. We need to think about everybody's needs, which are, of course, very, very diverse. So that's the goal, okay, that's the goal. I hope one day we'll be there, okay, we're moving towards. And maybe to end this, I'm going to show you the, uh, the movie, which was from this Poznan Without Hate, I hope I have it. Uh, czy mamy tutaj e, internet, czy nie? Raczej? Nie pani powie. Powinien być. Well, I believe that's my movie, MP4 click. O, cholera, nie nagrał się. Przepraszam, że tak powiedziałam. Uh, nie mamy internetu. To, uh, ok, so don't worry. I'm, I'm going to tell you what, what to have a look at, ok? Tolerance and uh, respect for everybody. And it was launched uh, in a moment in December last year. And the other one, if you uh, if you click on YouTube, Poznań bez nienawiści, you can find a movie which is like a result that shows you how this um, uh, action of painting over hatred on walls uh, uh, was carried out. Okay, so that's basically it. If you have any questions. Yes. Uh, I could share an internet so we can watch this. I could share. Uh, really? Yeah. So. Yeah. So let's do it. Would you like to see? Pass my best in I think, because that was. I thought I had it, and I asked for it to specifically to be 
uh, recorder, but it's not on my on my pen drive. To jak pan może, to bardzo proszę. Tu mamy Firefox, może być? Czy Chrome? Z czego? A wie pan, jak, a wie pan jak to udostępnić? No wiem. inviting you to participate in this action next year because I believe we will continue. Was, uh, uh, and I also heard that individual schools are now also uh, sorry. And if you need help, contact me. Okay? So thank you very much and if you have any questions. Now you know what I do, more or less. More. More. <laughs> okay. You can always go to my uh, to my web page. It's not really mine, it's the city. It's www.poznan.pl slash pelnomocniczka. Okay? You can find, uh, well, I try to be regular, but it's, uh, it's a little bit hard for me to, you know, to keep up with what I do, to write about everything. But uh, please uh, feel welcome, uh, go there, have a look at different activities uh, that I do in the city and for the people here, okay? And for you as well, education. Okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. that you go to, okay? Bring a lot of uh, inspiration, a lot of experiences, okay? And why don't you come and share with me? Feel invited to the city hall, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you.